Happy New Year once again. And we welcome everyone that are tuning in online, wherever you're watching this from, whatever, whichever time you're watching this from, we believe that this new year is your year. It's not just a pep talk. It's not just a motivational talk. We believe it because God is a good God. God is, a faith, God is faithful. He's a faithful God. He's a merciful God. And this applies in the people here in the room. Amen. We just speak of that declaration to everyone, to every ears, every heart to receive. Because he's good. <sighs> Hallelujah. You guys excited for the word? Yes. Excuse me here. We're going to make this quick, like I've always say. Like I've always said. 421. We'll be down here by 5. I was excited for that. Unless the Lord said, not yet. Come on. Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you in this place, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence now. Let every eyes be open, God. Let, it, let, every, let every ears be open today, God. Let every heart begin to perceive your, the things of you, God. Let that anointing now, God, once again be revealed. In this hour, Lord, we submit, we surrender to you. We thank you, Lord, that in you there is peace, there is rest, there is hope. Just as you've touched us, just as you have touched us already, God, begin to do it even more so, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. There you go. It's a lot better. A lot better, right? It's a lot better. He is good. He is good. On this first Sunday of the year, man, there is so much, so much to actually unpack. And I have been, I have been asking the Lord, Lord, just hold on one at a time. One at a time. Some of you have heard from me you know, we didn't gather last week, Saturday, last week, Sunday, which was Christmas Day. We didn't have this gathering on Christmas Day. We said that we'd have that as a break and come right back on the new year. And if I can be honest, it's a bit weird for me not to be showing up in the church on a Sunday. But I am thankful. I praise God for, for how it, you know, unfolded that day. And really, I, I want to pick pick up from, from really what, what I've been experiencing for the, last, for the last two weeks of December. Start off from that and, 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 and really and hope to bring a word from you that I believe came from the Lord that I believe will encourage us today. And today, I want to begin by sharing what I have been experiencing some of you, last time we were here, it was no, it snowed like crazy. And we were going to cancel our meeting last time we were here. And I was sharing to you last message that, you know, my, my dream and my encounter the night before and earlier that week, you know, the person of Jesus showing in the dream and basically reminding me, I've gone ahead of you. No need to worry, no need to, to be concerned because I, I've gone ahead of you. Ahead of you. I'm ahead of you. If you think you're ahead, I'm always going to be ahead of you. Right? And, and what I was sharing were, you know, we got, opportunity, we got the opportunity to hear from people to, to testify for, for, for how the Lord has been faithful and good with them throughout the year. Some of you have shared that. Some of you have shared really what the Lord has impressed in your heart in that moment. And it was amazing. We got, a lot, we got a lot of good feedbacks in terms of, you know, it's powerful to see that. It's always powerful to see, to hear from someone's testimony on, on how God intervened in their lives and, be, and, uh, and eventually transformed. And out of that, 
out of that revelation that week before Christmas, the Lord was already doing something in my heart. And sure enough, and again, I talk a little bit of, you know, how we, we live in the refining hour. Refining hour where our lives are being refined because the Lord is moving in our lives from faith to faith to glory to glory. He wants us to continue to be empowered to walk in that kind of lifestyle from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And with that, you know, true story, I woke up. I know the Lord was trying to get my attention. I woke up Sunday morning last week, Christmas Day. Didn't really, didn't really share this except to my wife. I, I was waking. Say, I woke up three in the morning Sunday, and I knew it was the Lord. I knew the Spirit of God was trying to impress something in me. But I was too tired. You know, we were up after midnight during the whole Christmas party and everything. That by the time I got to bed, it was already like after one, almost two, if anything, in the morning. And I woke up around, you know, just past three, maybe 10 after three. And I knew that the Lord was trying to get my attention to, to come before Him and seek Him spend time in prayer before him. And I tried to bargain and negotiate that, Lord, I'm tired. This could wait. And, you know, my spirit was, was alive, but my body just couldn't at that point. And I knew that I'd get up that morning. We don't have, we don't have Sunday service anyway. We had some scheduled you know, like events that we had to go to or seeing family or friends. But I knew that I'd be seeking you all week anyway, Lord, so just give me, give me this hour of sleep. <laughs> Who's been there before? Right? But the Lord's faithful because our flesh will always be weak. But when we operate in the Spirit of God, he, He's the one that strengthen and empower us. I woke up that day. I woke up, you know, I, I look at my clock. It's like 3, 3, 12, Lord. It's 3 in the morning, 12 after 3, God. What are you doing? I want you. I want you. I want you. I want you. Okay, Lord, I'll get up until I passed out. And I woke up. Could you not? I woke up. There's like 7 in the morning. This impression of I didn't see it, but it was everywhere in me, this strong impression that the angels just came. It took him a while, but here's the package. I woke up and like, I got a package. It took the angel that long, but I got this package that I've been asking for. Yes. And I'm like, Lord, what are you trying to do? What are, what are you saying? All I know is, hey, in faith, I have a package. I don't know what's in it, but I know it's a package that was delivered by the angel of God. Not for me, but it's for the assignment ahead. And from 26, yeah, after 25th, 26, the whole holiday rush coming into New Year, I postured and positioned myself to seek the Lord, and I did. In time of prayer, in time of studying His Word, I don't know, I didn't, all I know is like, in the Spirit, I got a package, I don't know what's in it, but it's, it's for your purpose, God, it's for you. Let me, help me understand, help me unpack that package. Throughout this week, I have been, you could say that I have been, I have, pos I have postured myself to do just that. And the Lord's faithful to release His Word. And today's message has to do with that. Part of this message today, which I will show now, um, has to do with how we go about, what I believe how we go about for this year. I don't know if you remember, but I was given an instruction 
that the first three weeks or the rest of the week of December that we would kind of touch on the transformation of God that has been taking place. And then comes New Year, we'll be asking the Lord, seek Him in the prophetic. Just say the word prophetic. If you don't know what that word is, you know, there have, been, there have been prophets from the very beginning of time. Prophets were, they're the people of God that hears directly from the Lord and speak of what is to come. And so I believe, I believe that there was a word that was given that I want to release to us this, this evening. To everyone that are watching, this word is, is also for you. And this is really just, hey, can I get your attention, says the Lord. He came to announce that the faith that's in you now is not the same faith that you were operating with last year. Are you following? Each one of us here, everyone that are choosing to tune in, Lord came to announce that your fate is not the same fate that you had last year. We we're just singing that song from glory to glory. And I'm going to break this down. And there is this, there is this charge that I believe the Spirit of God is releasing. So much for the whole introduction. But today I want to speak on this subject, Nicole, if you may. Believing for the impossible. Hallelujah. When is the last time you believe for the impossible to be made possible? Believing for the impossible. We're going to read the first passage of today. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 1 to 7, actually. So if you don't, if you may just begin to read through it. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. Now the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, Look now, the place where we live near you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan River and let us and let each man take from there a beam for the building and let us make a place there for ourselves where we may live. And he answered, go. Then one said, please be willing to go with your servants. So he answered, I shall go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down some of the trees but it happened that as one was cutting down a beam, the axe head fell into the water and he cried out and said, Oh no, my master, it was borrowed. The man of God said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Eli Elisha cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron axe head float. He said, Pick it up for yourself. So he reached out with his hand and took it. Man. Thank you, Freya. We've heard the story before. It is one of the, one of the record, one of the account in, in, in the book of Old Testament where we see prophet Elisha and, and his, uh, his students, you would say, were with him and got this encounter, miracle of God taking place. Just, I don't know about you, right from the get go as you read that story each one of us understand what just happened there there is no way the axe head would just float right no way if it fell off from its main whatever like rod well, not rod but um like handle right there's no way when i was saying earlier our faith is not the same as it was 
as you were last year. And the Lord, there is an invitation in this hour to believe for the impossible. And as we touch on this subject today, I pray that every heart would begin to see what has really been given and deposited to each one of us. Believing for the, for the impossible. I don't have it here, but Mark 10, 27 puts it this way. With man, it is impossible. But with God, anything, just declare that. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything. I don't know what you may be carrying coming into this new year. But like I said, the, the Lord's knocking. There is a great invitation to believe for the impossible. Can you say amen? amen? If last year it was such a challenge to believe for something, today there's an invitation to posture your heart to believe for something. How many of us understand that that doesn't just happen? It is our conscious self allowing God to work in us and be empowered to actually position our hearts to believe for the impossible. Not in our own might, not in our own strength, but with His help. Because it's in Him and through Him that all things become possible. Who in this house today would say that you have something going on in your life that you could use a breakthrough, just like as we've been singing it, and right now, you're, you're probably one of that student where, oh no, I borrowed this. There is no way I can redeem that axe head that just fell off the water. See, you have to understand, I, I did a little study on this. If you put back the, the uh, first few verses there, were sons of the prophets of Elisha. This was actually the picture. One day, they realized, hey, Elijah, we're, we're getting crowded here. And we could, use, we could use extra room. You know, there's so many of us waiting to just, you know, we want to follow you where you go because we want to be trained by you. We know that your man, of, your, your man of God and the Spirit of God is upon you. That's the picture here. To a point where, they couldn't, they, 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 couldn't, they couldn't keep up with just being with one another because it's getting too crowded. That they were suggesting, hey, let's put, maybe we can go pick ourselves some, some beams, some foundations, some trees that we can cut down and we could build ourselves a place where we can, you know, where we can lodge. That's pretty much what they were suggesting at this point. And so Elisha gave them that green light. Go ahead. And they asked him, come with, you know, you should come with us. Gave him the approval. And so that incident took place. And yet in the middle of it, God's provision was actually being revealed in that hour. Are you following? Somebody's cry, we're not, you know, this place is too small for us. Let us go so that we can Take from a, from the, from, take beam, make a place for ourselves. It's a pure, it's, it's a pure cry. Are you following? And they ask, which something we could take today. When we ask, it starts by asking. And they go, it, it go, it, it, it went on. Where they've asked him, please come with us. And so he did. And eventually that whole incident took place. And I love what verse 7, if you next slide there, please. You know, as they realize, oh my gosh, this is borrowed. Please understand it was borrowed because they don't even have money in terms of owning their own. Right? Like at that time, sons of they, they were saying in that that sons of prophets are actually, they chose a different lifestyle where they completely let go of everything they, they have and they went with this man of God. Basically at that time, they don't know it, but they were disciples, students of Elisha. Please understand that when we read Old Testament, it's not like with us here today. The Spirit of God comes and goes to, to, to whomever, whoever it, 
it chooses uh, as a person. Are you following? So at that time, Elisha, who has been given a double portion of before that, Elijah was operating with, Elijah was operating in the wisdom, in the power, in the knowledge of who God is at that time. And so all these prophets were following him, waiting to get trained, to get equipped, and also walk in the ways of the Lord. It's a pure cry that they want to place for their own. Believing for the impossible. Here's one account of so many accounts that we can read right now. But the Lord impressed this in my heart for us today. Because I feel like, and I, feel, I, really, I really sense this. If it's something that we're used to, chances are we're, we're going to take it because we know that it would work out this way. But a lot of times when we find ourselves in situations where, I don't know if this is going to work out. Somebody's experience, others' experiences, that we've allowed ourselves to be limited and stop understanding that God is the one that is at work within our lives. That unconsciously, we end up neglecting the very impossible things that God wants to break through. Are you following? And so as we position our hearts for this year ahead, here's a prophetic word that I believe the Lord is releasing in this hour. There is an encouragement to believe for the impossible. I'm going to go back to that story in a bit. But can you just show up that next passage that I have there, uh, Nicole? Romans chapter 10. Let's hear from Al, bro. But how will people call on him in whom they have not believed? And how will they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are commissioned and sent for that purpose? just as it is written and forever remains written. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. But they did not all pay attention to the good news of salvation. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes from hearing what is told and what is heard comes from the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Amen. Thank you. If you don't catch anything there, you can go back there. But faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. Amen. The story that we just read from the account of what took place with Elisha and the sons of the prophets, that is, that is enough for us that, hey, if that took place back then, it still takes place today. We were, we were just saying that he's the same God. Are you following and yet, at there's times where, how come we're not seeing it that way? Anybody ask yourself that question? Believe it or not, there is an answer for that. And the one that is holding the answer back is us. Are you following? Hallelujah. See, if you know that there is no, like, we have a science people in the room. You know, we don't, you don't need to be so expert in science, science to understand that if a, met, if a piece of metal drops in the water, it, there is no way that would, float, that would float up. Do you understand? It will stay at the bottom of that whatever, water. It is impossible. I'm speaking to us. What is that impossible thing? What is that mountain thing? that we may be going through right now. God wants to intervene. God wants to give us the understanding to go about that. Are you following? And so, with that story, with that, story that we just read, I don't have to argue with this. Faith just rises up. It 
if an axe float can be called out by a man of God, then it means today we have that same authority and power. How do you access that, Josh? How do you access it? First point I just want to release to you. Can I tell you that we've been given the same measure of faith? Can you go next slide there after that passage? Faith that is in you. Anybody got faith in this house today? It's in you. Apostle Paul talks about how we've been given the same measure of faith. And I was just telling you earlier, I heard this so loud. The Lord's announcing that your faith is not the same as it was last year. Because you position your hearts for more. It's no longer a size of a mustard seed or however it was you think it was last year. Are you following? It is impossible to continue to press on for the things of God and not understand that the Lord is growing us. Faith that is in you. Well, you know, Josh, that's Old Testament. You know, come on, that's Elijah. You know, he didn't only, he, he didn't just make that, you know, that axe head float, uh, really floated up, whatever. He, he did other things. You know, he, he also multiplied food. He called someone help someone out of their uh, lacking, brought provision. There's a lot of things. And Elijah is one of the men of God that, that did amazing things, miracles before the Lord. And yet today we're living in, in the hour where Christ is in as the hope of glory. There's a greater measure deposit in us. It's the same spirit that work, that work with Elisha sitting in us today. Are you following? Faith that is in you. We heard the story. All of a sudden, there is this invitation to believe, to hope for something that is way beyond our imagination, way beyond our expectation. Are you following? And that is activated because of the faith that is in us. I hope this is helping you today. Mark 5, 36, put it this way. If some of the things sometimes you find yourself were, yeah, Josh, but I just don't feel that faith in me. Here's a reminder from the words of Jesus. Mark 5, 36, put it this way. Do not be afraid. Only keep on believing in me and my power. Next verse, Luke 8, 50. It's the same, it's the same parallel verse. Uh, synagogue official Jarius, when his daughter was sick, called upon Jesus, who, who, who he heard was healing. And just the word of Jesus over him. When, when, when the messenger said, hey, don't, don't bother the teacher, your, your daughter passed away. But Jesus, encouraging words, do not be afraid any longer, only believe and trust in me and have faith in my, abil my ability to do this, and she will be made well, which we know she did. Amen. Amen. Some would say that fear is the opposite of faith, right? We've been on the subject many times. Every year, I wonder, God, we sing the same songs, we, we preach the same message every new year. Because we declare it, we want to speak hope, we want to speak faith. But when do we ever really understand and move on from it? Now, that's just my question with the Lord. But the fact that this is being released, it's because the Lord's really grace, the, re the Lord is, is giving us the grace to continue to, to learn, to grow, and understand what is in us already, what's been given and deposited in us already. Today, if we're going to believe for the impossible, if we're going to believe for the impossible, we need to be reminded that there is a faith in us 
It's not just faith for what you think it is. It is in you. Because you've known that this God lives in you. And so that brings us to the next point I just kind of want to touch on today, which is the power of God. The life of Elisha, can I tell you this? If you're not too familiar with his life, he was just taking care, doing the whole farming life, taking care of the oxen when Elijah threw his cloak and he happened to caught it and eventually the Spirit of God, the encouragement in him, and he was intrigued who, who this man is, and I want to follow this guy. And eventually, he became a student, follower of Eli Elijah at that time. So please understand, there was a moment, there was a season of his life where he has not, he hasn't, he hasn't seen anything. He hasn't experienced anything of God. But the time that he started hanging out with Elijah, as Elijah started operating in the things of God, in the power of God, he began to see, he began to hear that to a point when Elijah left, what do you want me? Is there anything you want me to do for you? I want double portion. It's not, a, it's not greed. It's simply understanding, I know there's more. Double portion, God. And that's exactly what he got. And all the miracles that he's done as you read the accounts of the life of Elijah, it's all God. And yet, you read all that and that power that, you know, you, like it's like watching a movie better. It's a work within us. Because the power of God is at work within each one of us. Is everyone following this? Believing for the impossible because there's a faith inside of you that has been given to you. Have you received it? If not, there's that invitation for us once again. Oh, if you can't, if you can't believe for, for a breakthrough over your headache, it's going to be hard to believe for a breakthrough over cancer. Are you following If it's so hard to believe for an axe head to float back up, then it may, it may just be a, a challenge to believe for a financial breakthrough in your life. But the Lord is the one that is empowering us, amen. He's given us the faith and He's opened our eyes to understand that we have the access of the power of God in us, in and through us. Are you following? Next, Ephesians 3. We know this. I'm going to read. Uh, Jillian, welcome. Can we ask you to read this one? Three verses or two verses. Actually, six verses. Go ahead. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually and energized with power through his spirit in your inner self indwelling your innermost being and personality so that christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith and may you having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints God's people, the width and length and height and depth of his love, fully experiencing the amazing endless love. Next slide. And that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled with, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have 
the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. Until the 21. Yes. Yeah. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super, super rub, abundantly, super abundantly <clears throat> more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Do you know the power that's at work in you? If you have forgotten today, it's rising up in you. There is a faith and a power that is at work within us that enables us to believe for the impossible things. When do you ever see the breakthrough? Do me a favor. Second Kings, on the second slide there, 7 to 6 to 7, verse 6 to 7. I want to show you this quickly. As soon as the, the student realized, oh man, that was borrowed. There is no way in his thinking, there's no way I can redeem it back. They could have said, the author could have named Elijah, but he used this word. The man of God said, and this is talking about Elijah, Asked the question, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, don't miss this principle right here. Elijah cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron accent float. And he said to the student, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. Many times we read the story, this account, we almost forget the last part of it, of how that ask came about. We just, we hear that story, yeah, 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 Elijah, you know, power of God in him and through him made the ax head come up, float. But there was a principle there. Something has to be thrown. Are you following? Something has to be thrown. We want to walk in faith. You want to walk in His power. What are you throwing out? Yeah. Believing for the impossible. We don't just wait for the impossible things to happen. What are you throwing? Can I be honest? I'm going to be honest. If we're going to walk out in faith and, and understand the power and authority that's been given to us, that only that is only possible, and this is not a conditional thing before, before the Lord. It's just how good God is. It requires more of Him in us and less of us, which means dying to ourselves. Which means I don't know Your Word, God, but You said that faith comes from hearing. Let me understand Your Word. If I'm to grow in faith, let me hear Your Word. I realize that I've been given a I've been giving you guys a whole lot of verses. You know, but Josh, you know, some people learn visually. Show them anyway. It's, the, it's not your word, Josh. It's my word anyway. They'll see it. It'll spark something in them because that's how faith come about. Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. How will they believe if nobody is even there to preach? How will they believe to something they never heard? How they will, how they will believe that the ax head can float? If nobody is telling them that, hey, somebody did it. Are you following? What are we throwing out? This year, we cannot, I tell you this, oh, hallelujah. This is not the year where we just wait for things to happen. This is the year where we posture our hearts. We determine now what we believe God is going to do this year. Are you following? You position, we position ourselves 
<laughs> and, and, and believe it or not, sometimes I would wait until the first, second week of the year. But like, God, I'm not doing that. I'm posturing my heart in the last two, last two weeks of the year for what you want to release for the following year ahead. Oh, I tell you, what a great time it has been. And it's not, it, it, it should not, should make, shouldn't feel bad if, if, you, if you feel like you're not there. No, it's not about that. It's how the Lord, how you respond for what God is speaking to you. And now that it's been given to you, there is an invitation to actually respond to this. As we go about this new year ahead of us, we don't have to be uncertain. We can determine now what we believe is God is, is doing and, and announcing to us. And I said this from the very beginning of time, beginning of this, this uh, fellowship today. He's given us the faith for it all. That our faith is not the same as we were yesterday. Doesn't have to be last year. Your faith today is not the same as yesterday. Because now, this has been released to you. How do you respond to this now? Josh, you're crazy. You're crazy. Have you ever, have you ever found yourself sometimes with talking to a people, may, may not be a believer of this God that we profess, so they don't, they don't carry the same faith as you do, and then when you start speaking of when you start speaking in faith, they tell you you're a fool, you're crazy. We all had that experience before, right? Can somebody relate? Yes, the name. I'll take it. One hand, two hands. But you know what I'm saying? Where you said something out of the ordinary because for them, this is not. You don't. If you put a metal in the water, it will stay down. No, 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 you don't understand. My God, he can bring it up. You're crazy. Can I tell you what's happening there? What that person is saying, that person is simply saying, God's word is not true, and he's a liar. And sometimes we ourselves reason that out. God said in his word, Ephesians 20, to him who is able to do more, super abundantly more. We read that. We read that. To him who's able to do more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest, as the Amplify amplifies it, beyond our greatest prayers, hope, or dreams, according to the power that is in work with us. We read that word, family, and this is what's happening. We just shoved it. And, so, and when we're supposed to be walking in power, we're not operating in it. And sometimes we find ourselves that. It's not to make us feel bad for what, for what we have been. It's to actually, it's actually to convict us and understand what has been said because God's word is true. It's for us. It's the truth. God is not a liar. God's word will remain true. Is everyone following this? We're not crazy. We're just believers. Are you following? And so, I'm going to end here. As I was seeking the Lord beginning of this week, coming into this new year, he impressed his heart to me. He just... He really just said, Josh, I want you to preach prophetically. What do you mean, Lord? Am I not preaching? I want you to preach prophetically. What I said is to happen, to come. I will do that. Now, people have lost it. People have been challenged that they forget. So when, you, when, he, when, he, when, he, when he was telling me to preach prophetically, He's actually telling me, I'm returning. I am coming back for you. I'm coming back for my children. People that does not believe me will go to hell. Preach prophetically. 
It's scary, and yet it's the truth of his word. He said it, not, not that we said it. Are you following? But he said this loud and clear. I don't know if I kept it on the last passage or last slide, Nicole, but Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. Preach prophetically, and he said this loud and clear. But the time is coming when the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now that's more. Thank you, Jesus. Can I tell you that throughout 2022, we've been experiencing this? that jumping to this new year, we're going to see more of this? Are you following? We're living this hour where it's a great deposit knowledge of the glory of God that is being, re being revealed. You know, if you were joining us last Thursday, Pastor Tom talked about revival, how revival is to take place this year. How many of us hear that every year? I believe, Pastor, Tom, know my heart. I believe that. I believe the Spirit of God speaking through him. Because I'm also declaring that revival is here now. Are you following? But I want to make this point. Yes, we live in the hour of revival. Amen? But if we're really going to see revival taking place I believe with all my heart, it's not much of a revival. It's not much of a revival without this. Next slide there, uh, Nicole. Without these three things that I believe. I keep saying I believe. I believe in the God the Father. Somebody, if it's going to be a glorious time, if it's going to be the, the, the revelation of his glory in this on this earth right now in this hour, if it's going to be a time of revival, I have to believe that that is happening because there, there will be people of faith. There will be people that will share testimony. There will be people, those that will be redeemed by him. It's not a glorious time. It's not a revival without those it's glorious because people will understand how to walk and operate in faith. To begin to walk in the power and authority that's been given to them. And it's going to be glorious because people will, will be fighting in a way where, well, in a good way, will be racing to come up here and share a testimony that God did for their lives or somebody that they prayed for. Are you following it's going to be a breakthrough. It's going to be a revival because there will be those, which is the greatest miracle ever, that would, that would testify how they've given their lives to Jesus himself. They've been restored. They've been redeemed. And that's, that's glorious. That's revival. But without those people that is does not know, does not understand what it's like to walk in faith, to understand, come on, family, today, I am believing that this year we're going to see a great harvest, double portion, and even more so, harvest of souls. I'm going to end with a dream. I'm, starting, I'm still seeking the Lord on this stream right here. We're going to pray. I'm going to end with this dream. Did I share all of it? Hopefully this catches you. Yes, oh, sorry. Revelation 12, 11, as we know. They overcame and conquered because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And the word of their testimony. We quote that, and we, we miss the last part. Look at the last part. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. We love quoting, yeah, 
Oh, I'm going to share my testimony because we overcome with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yeah, and also don't forget the last part. You're not afraid. The point where you lose your life for him. You, if you're going to quote that, quote the rest of it. Are you following? Come on, that's, that's a strong one now. But God is faithful. The reason we're here today, gathered here today, for in this house, in this center, in this equipping, in this encouraging, because he wants us to grow in his word, in the knowledge of him, and he wants, he wants the rest around us to also to hear from us. There's an assignment that's been given. He's been saying it. Not only we're kings and priests and ambassadors, but we are really rep representative. We are the Christ in this world. We represent him in his kingdom. I was in, as I was doing my study in, in the life of Elijah, parts of it, I didn't realize that his name actually means, Elijah means, apparently, God is salvation. God is salvation. Elijah, on the other hand, Yahweh is my God. Now that's what it means, Elijah. Yahweh is my God. And then his student, Elijah, no, mix, Elijah and Elijah. Elijah is, is God is salvation. And then I was reminded of what Joshua stands for. Joshua means God is deliverance. Wait, I had a dream a couple nights ago, and I didn't know this. In my dream, man, the Lord's been pouring out so much, and I tell you guys, like, it's, it's quite a package. In my dream, I was, I was in this passenger vehicle with other group, you know, other, other people that's with me. We were going up this mountain, and this is a very isolated mountain, if anything, private, if anything. But on this mountain, people come up here to crucify themselves and die for it. Because they think that their sacrifice, it's their sacrifice. They want to earn, they want to earn the things of God so they would rather just sacrifice their lives because in their, in their thinking, that's the way to go. And in the dream, this passenger vehicle does not have any bottom. But like we're just sitting down and this vehicle is going, approaching up and my feet, oh, hallelujah, didn't even know this. My feet are touching the ground. And before we even made it all the way to the top to see, these are like big crosses that have fallen down on the road. And there's blood and flesh of people on the road. It was so disturbing. I'm not even kidding you. This feeling of, I mean, like in a foreign land and very intimidating. And I'm riding this passenger vehicle along with other people. And I'm touching the ground as, as, the, as the vehicle was moving. And I'm like, I'm so worried that, oh my goodness, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up touching the flesh of that person or the blood on the ground. And I realized, oh wait, no, I'm wearing, I'm wearing my black shoes. I kid you not, I'm not thinking about this. But I was wearing black shoes. Like, I didn't think of this today. When I, we spent the New Year at my in-laws, I didn't have my proper shoes, so I'm wearing this black shoes today. And it looked like this. Totally forgot about it. Um, and so from that, it was so disturbing. I was like, God, like, I was just there going, approaching this, journeying up to this mountain. And all I could think of, Lord, they don't, they've wasted their life for something they thought is the way. And I, after that, from another scene to another scene, where 
Fast forward, had a dream with my, with my dad. I was assisting my dad. And then my dad was about to send me, you know, he showed me a picture where I'm being sent to school as a young boy, but they, they want to keep my identity as a, as a believer of Christ or else I get in trouble. So anyways, long story short, I woke up and began to ask the Lord, God, what are you showing me? I'm, and from the get-go, I knew that he's given me a heart for people. And I didn't realize that Elijah, Elijah's name, God, is salvation. I'm releasing a word to you today because there has been a great, there has been deposit. I know it's not just me. You guys have been, you guys that have paid attention in a way is now accountable for this too. People that tune in online. That there is good news. We carry the good news in us. We're the light of this world, amen. We have been given a message to preach the message. The kingdom of God is at hand, therefore repent, right? The only message that we, we, we tell people. But the fact where I was really, when I started realizing this last night, there is going to be a great salvation this year, a count of harvest and salvation this year. It is just, it's no longer just bring in some people. Let's grow, let's grow this church, this center. No, that's not the picture the Lord showed me. It is our daily lives, daily lives, wherever we go, whatever we do, how do we carry out this Christ in us? How do we speak to people? How do we carry ourselves? How do we operate in faith? How do we manifest the power that is in us? Are you following? Because people looking at you, whether you think they're paying attention or not, they're looking at you. Last night, I'm not even kidding, last night I was in my other relative's family celebrating New Year or having before the countdown, we were there. And out of nowhere, my, my, my wife's niece, or yeah, technically niece-in-law, came up to me telling me, hey, do you know this church? My, my friend just passed away, got OD'd by, by a drug. And I want to start going to church. I'm like, Lord, I'm not ready for this. I just want to celebrate New Year. <laughs> and I knew that God, well, hey, I told you, I've given you a package. What are you going to do about it? So we spent good time just sharing, chatting. Hey, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to go out with you soon. We're, we're going to make time. You know, we'll bring you out to that church. We'll see. Actually, that church they're talking about is actually Love Quest. So I was just surprised. when like, surprised but not surprised. You know, more like young adults too, right? But they've been doing amazing things. Came from Richmond. Now to Suri. But God's timing. And all of a sudden, she was talking about how she's had this epiphany coming into New Year. She believes in God, grew up as a Catholic, but she doesn't, you know, she thinks that there's more than to it. And it's like, you're right. Keep asking your question. Today, you don't have to be, today, you don't have to be unsure about it. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. I released those words over her. Didn't pray because didn't feel led to. But there's a connection. Now there is a seed planted. She came, joined us during the countdown, talked some more, but just love on her. You saw Pastor Tom's post at Safeway, reached out to him. This is a year of salvation, I'm telling you. For us that, that's not sure if we're saved, this year is going to be the year where you're going to stop doubting that you're saved. Because you believe in Him. I don't have this in me on the slides here, but the Great Commission, as you read the first, sorry, the last chapter of Mark, where it spoke of the Great Commission that believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Believers will drink 
some poison. They will not, they will not get poison. They, get, they will get bitten by a snake. They will not get poisoned by it. They will cast out demons. It's not Christians, believers. Those that believe for the impossible, you are a believer. Therefore, you, you, you can. Yes, you can. You're able. He's able. Him that is in you is able. Amen. Come on, hope that blesses you today. Let's just... Yeah, we're going to do something. We're going to do communion. But if we can just rise up quickly. I want to do this. I want to do this quickly. We're going to... Before we do a communion, before we do... Yeah, while you're passing that around. Who's got... Who, who just got deposited, you know, who, who, who got a deposit of faith today? Amen. Hallelujah. Let there be an increase of faith, Lord. Hallelujah. First communion of the year. Oh, for some. Second. <laughs> Me too. Second this year. And there'll be many more ahead of us. Amen. In this house, first of the year. How amazing is that? How exciting is that? <laughs> I'm telling you, I am grieving for what I saw in my dream. I've never had such a dream like that. Stepping on people's flesh and blood and felt so they wasted it, God. That strong urging and conviction to not, to not be a lazy Christian, as others would say it, there is that. I'm telling you, you're not the same as you were last year. If you think last year you just kind of, let me test the water. No. Everyone and everyone that will watch and tune into this, you are full on both of your feet and that. There is no turning back. The, the moment you find yourself turning back, there's only great opposition. So you might as well stay in because the one that is with you is greater than those that are, are, not, that are against you. Let the Lord open your eyes today. Let the Lord open your ears and your hearts to perceive that best is yet to come, that no eyes has seen, no ear has heard. We've been talking about this. And as we take this communion, the body that has been broken, the blood that has been shed on the cross, we've been doing this so many times in this year that I'm telling you part of the reason that we walk in divine health today is because of this. I'm serious. Do you notice how many people got sick the last couple months? And we're not, I'm not saying we're any better. This has power. We spoke about the power of God. This is power. We walk in divine health because of what he's done. The by his stripes we have been healed. It is the freedom, the, the, the forgiveness that we walk into, that there is no power of guilt, condemnation that stays. He set us free. He's given us joy. He's given us hope. So as we take this, whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready, just do it. Thank him for his body that's been broken. And thank him for the blood that has been shed. That you have been washed. That you've been cleansed. That it's no longer you that lives, but Christ lives in you. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God.